Well, that's what Becker has to say. In fact, he has a lot more to say, and I'll leave it to some other folks that you'll hear this weekend to do that. But now the question becomes, so what? If, uh, or how, rather, uh, does this analysis help us understand uh, human beings' atrocious propensity to be brutal to those that are different than themselves. And, and here Becker offers us two really, I think, profoundly stunning insights in another book with evil in the title called Escape from Evil. All right, now Becker says, look, if in fact I'm right, if your beliefs about the nature of reality serve a death-denying function, then there's two problems. Problem number one is what happens when you encounter someone who has different beliefs. Right? Becker's point is whether you're aware of it or not, the very existence of an alternative conception of reality is fundamentally threatening. Right? Because if you believe something, let's say that God created the earth in six days before taking a well-deserved break on the seventh, and you run into, let's say, someone from the South Pacific where they believe that the earth emerged from a giant coconut shell out of the side of a palm tree, well, there's a problem. Because if you accept the validity of an alternative conception of reality, you do so necessarily by undermining the confidence with which you subscribe to your own perspective. And when you do that, you expose yourself to the very anxiety that your beliefs were constructed to reduce. Does that make sense? That's the closest thing to a technical thought that I have. So I'm going to actually say that again, uh, because Becker is very clear about what's happening theoretically here. If your beliefs about reality serve a death-denying function when you run into somebody who's different, that's problematic. Because if you accept their beliefs, you necessarily undermine the confidence that you have in your own. When you do that, you expose yourself to the very anxiety that those beliefs were designed to ward off. And when that happens, it instigates a host of compensatory psychological mechanisms that are designed to restore your psychological equanimity. All right, so that's point number one, is that if Becker's ideas are true, then we're going to have a problem when we run into people that are different than ourselves. All right, point number two is in some ways even more gruesome and discombobulating because what Becker goes on to say is, you know what? Even if there weren't different people around to annoy us, we would designate somebody as different because we have to. All right, well, his argument is as follows, as articulated in the Escape from Evil book. What he says is, look, at, at no matter how powerful and convincing your culture is, it is ultimately a symbol. All, all cultural constructs are symbolic. They're human creations. All right. However, death is a very real physical phenomenon. And the point that Becker makes very simply is that no symbol, regardless of its power or potency, will ever be sufficient to overcome the physical reality of death. It's like mixing apples and oranges. Consequently, and I've got to degenerate into some psychoanalytical language, which is probably okay for some, less so for others, what Becker says, again borrowing from William James, he says, you know what? Therefore, no matter how good your culture is or how much you believe in it, there's always going to be some residual anxiety about death. And you're not aware of that, he claims, because that anxiety is repressed. And then using Freud's ideas, what Becker says is that repressed anxiety is projected onto another group of individuals, either inside or outside of your culture, that you designate as the all-encompassing repository of evil, the eradication of which would make life on earth as it is in heaven. He calls them scapegoats, and I, and I think uh, we're familiar with them. They're either in-house or external ones. Either way, Becker says, we've got a problem. Either you run into people that are different, and that's a problem, or you declare somebody to be different, and that's a problem, because what Becker then goes on to do, borrowing very heavily from some sociologists that we're very fond of, uh, Peter Berger and Thomas Luckman, 
in, in a book called The Social Construction of Reality, uh, what Becker does, uh, following Berger and Lachman, is to talk about the psychological processes that are instigated when people encounter others who do not share their beliefs or encounter somebody who they have designated as different. I'm going to abridge this list a bit uh, just to get us through the evening and just stick to the basics uh, and talk about three reactions that we're all familiar with. Reaction number one, uh, we call derogation. I think because Berger and Luckman called it that. That's just a high dollar word for berating or belittling somebody. So I believe that God created the earth in six days and, and took a break. Those people in, South, um, in the South Pacific believe that the earth was created out of a giant coconut shell. Was well, that a problem? Of course not. Those are ignorant savages that lives, uh, live in huts and worship piles of sticks and mud. They don't have CNN or email or, or beepers, and so no wonder they have such a stupid conception of reality. I'm being facetious here. I'm not uh, meaning to be taken literally. The point that I want to make is that the first line of psychological defense when we encounter those that are different than ourselves is, is to belittle the possessors of an alternative conception of reality reality uh, as a subhuman, unintelligent form of life, because once we do that, that diminishes the challenge that their conception of reality poses to us. How's that sound? Does that make sense? A couple of head shakes for an emotional boost. Awesome. All right. Thing number two uh, is uh, while we berate these folks, we generally simultaneously try to get them to divest their ridiculous ideas about the nature of reality and to adopt ours instead. I think Berger and Luckman call this assimilation, or we do, I can't remember. Uh, but we're more familiar with the term conversion. And this usually happens either politically or, or religiously. And so the next thing that we try to do is to get folks to drop their ideas and, and to adopt ours instead. And, and let's think about this for a moment, because I think this is very important. It certainly is for Becker, because we need to understand what's at stake. Becker's point is, is that there's a sense in which culture is a shared illusion. And what he means by that very simply is that if we grant that cultural beliefs are human constructions, what we also need to note is that there's lots of different ways to apprehend reality and there's no absolute way to insist that any one of them is of necessity better than another. How's that sound? Well, as a result, the way that we maintain confidence in our beliefs is by social consensus. So the more people that share our beliefs, the more confident we can be uh, that they're correct. And, and again, I mean no offense, although I'd be happy to offend if necessary. If you're a single person uh, in the train station in New York City, uh, and anybody who's been on the East Coast are familiar with these types, walking around, it's July, you've got a winter coat on and a big shopping bag full of crap, uh, and uh, you're walking around gibbering how this large bearded guy created all of humanity in his image and the rest of the world in six days, if there's only one person saying that stuff, you're going to reach for the bottle of antipsychotic medication and pass it on. You're just going to say that is so maniacal uh, that that's beyond belief. Well, when half of the world has that belief, it's not so maniacal. It's the received wisdom of one of the world's dominant religions. And again, I mean no offense here. The point that I want to make is that if it's just your belief, it's autism. If it's everyone's belief, it's culture. And it doesn't change the fact that one of them is no more or less right than the other. So the point that Becker makes is that we go to enormous lengths uh, to get other folks to dispose of their ideas and to adopt ours instead. I don't want to single anyone out in particular this evening except to note the Christian missionaries uh, and the United States uh, are the biggest 
uh, of the converters in terms of religion and politics respectively. Uh, and I think it's for the same psychological reasons. And we may, can maybe talk about this later on uh, if we need to. The Russians were right up there, but they weren't as good at it as uh, we are. And so they're out of the running these days. All right. Well, 